Yes, we'll see. Fantastic record in this competition. In any competition, really, that Manchester United have entered since he's been manager 25 years. There has been this recent issue with Wayne Rooney, who was left out of the New Year's Eve game. Nightmare on New Year's Eve, as it turned out. Rooney didn't play. Manchester United lost at home to Blackburn. And uh, they need a performance from him. Manchester United. Heavy security presence. It's the red side of Manchester to kick off. They actually haven't lost three games in a row for over ten years, and those were the last three fixtures of the season when the league title was already clinched. So they weren't very costly defeats. But that would be the situation should they lose this Manchester derby in the third round of the FA Cup. It looks though like Jones is going to be at right back and Smalling's going to be the centre half. I think that's a good move by Sir Alex Ferguson. Jones really struggled in the air against Newcastle. And that's the change that he's made from the formation that we were given. Aguero wants it back and uh, gets it back. It's on Rio Ferdinand out of the centre. Here's the younger Dutchman who was integral and a success last season, but hasn't played so much this time because Manchester City have changed their philosophy. They're far more offensive in their nature. And go forward from all positions, including at left-back, where Kolarov's won a free kick from uh, Valencia. Well, when they want some attacking options at left-back, they play Kolarov. When they want a better defender, they play Clichy. And Richards at right-back was man of the match in the 6-1 at Old Trafford in October. He booked his place really. He didn't book it in his performance against Liverpool. I thought he was really poor in the 3 0 win. I know it sounds funny. They won the game 3 0. But he didn't play particularly well. Stuart Downey went past him on several occasions. Yes, that was the bounce back from the 1 0 defeat a week ago at Sunderland. And he conceded to virtually the last kick of the game. That was a questionable throw by Nanny. And you can maybe put it down to the tension of the occasion, but a schoolboy would be disappointed with taking a throw in like that. Just for his first decision. Any real note? Sprinkling of rain. But, uh, certainly the winter in England has been very kind to those who love to get out and watch their teams play at all levels. Adam Johnson. And it's taken on by Milner here. The City try to go at United from the off. Only clears, but not very effectively. And another header from Carrick. Here's Lescott. So much experience in all the types of football, including these Manchester derbies for these players, but this is very special at this particular time in the history of the two clubs. Said that Milner would just play a holding role. Already he's made a couple of good runs. There he runs past Giggs. Ferdinand did well to read the situation. A good pass from Adam Johnson, giving his chance out on the right hand side today. Here's Aguero. Look at the room here for Richards to uh, measure across. David Silva was trying to chest it down for Sami Nasri. Welbeck's presence is uh, to keep Lescott and company on his toes, on their toes. I meant company with a C, but it's also with a K as well. Um, because Welbeck, will, although he's coming back here, will want to run in behind at every opportunity. He was trying to set off then, and Giggs had the ball but couldn't keep it. Certainly started off at a good tempo. City having the better of the first three or four minutes. Ninth meeting in the FA Cup between these two uh, great rivals going back to the days when uh, Manchester United with Newton Heath and City were Ardwick. And uh, what sort of support uh, Welbeck's going to get Stuart Rooney, as we can see there, he pressed the ball and very much part of a midfield that's been bypassed here, Silva. 
Once again, look who was in the box, James Milner. So he looks like De Jong's just going to play as the holding midfielder by himself. And allow Milner to go forward as well. But look how deep Rooney is again, just trying to shield his midfield players there. It's going to be difficult for him to break forward to support Welbeck. Well, strangely, a year ago you'd have expected maybe Manchester City to line up with this sort of uh, defensive phalanx. And it's a depleted Manchester United, a lot of injuries, a lot of wounding to the pride as well. Silva. And Alec Ferguson putting out at the side here. Lined up really to make sure they stay in the game in the early minutes. Completely relaxed. The way the game started. But I saw the match against Sunderland, Stuart, where in different circumstances, Sunderland just sat back and drew the sting and eventually found a moment to go and win the game. And maybe Manchester United are looking at that. To design that strategy I actually thought Man City played better in that game than they did against Liverpool created more chances Just didn't quite have the same sort of luck and finishing prowess and uh, Valencia able to see it out from Kolarov he's been playing quite a lot recently as a right back for Alec Ferguson Details that are uh, fascinating to examine uh, after all the pre match talk. Oh, trying to close down, indeed, closing down the Lindergaard. And it's uh, unsettling for Manchester United again. And he just takes too long over in his touch out of his feet. Where Oakshire a lot of energy. Could have gone anywhere. Very moment for Lindergaard. Really is Manchester City's current wealth. The uh, rich backups from the Middle East has restored the edge to this rivalry for many years. Manchester United would tell you they had bigger fixtures than playing against City. Particularly uh, Liverpool, who they faced a year ago in the third round when they scored very early from the penalty spot. And on the, on the, and Kenny Dunkley's first game, and right before, and his second spell as. Liverpool. He's got Liverpool safely through to round four. They kicked off the third round on Friday night. And a 5-1 home win against Oldham Athletic. Company. Here's uh, Johnson. Caught by Everett. And he's captaining Manchester United again. I to say a feature of Manchester United's play or good play defensive players been Everest defending this season yes he's been good going forward but he's one-on-one -on -one defending and his positional play has been poor for match United this season Patrice Everett Johnson will try and get him and City won the semi-final one nil at Wembley against Manchester United and later lifting the trophy last season Kolarov velocity and not too much venom in the end because it pass well back in the wall he might have been actually shooting for goal there and did he try to play that one in Richards and he's struggling Manchester City pushing on Silva Movement from Aguero, but there was no way through for the pass. Brought out by Rooney. Knocked on by Jones. But not to Valencia's liking. There you saw the chance of the counter attack, but it was a poor pass from Jones. After a good start at Match United this season, it's just dropped. And it be at right back, midfield, or at centre half. Closed him down. Giggs. Only really able to turn. Well, that going towards the near post. Rooney coming in! It's a brilliant header. And Manchester United with their first real attack score. 
and all the focus that was on Wayne Rooney. Needing a performance today, well, he's got off to a fantastic start. Well, he made a brilliant decision. First of all, he was looking for the run of Welbeck. He decided to play it out wide for Valencia, then continued his run into the box. And Manchester United had three players in there. Sets it up here, he can't get it to Welbeck, so plays it wide. There's three players in the box. Man City don't defend it well enough. Richards tries to get across, but what a header from Wayne Rooney. He gets above the young. Richards can't get there. And right into the top corner. But that was good decision-making by Wayne Rooney and a great cross from Valencia. Yep. It is in, Sir Alex. And Wayne Rooney, who, of course, scored, getting on for a year ago, the goal of 2011 to beat Manchester City in the uh, Premier League at Old Trafford has given them the chance of beating them here at the Etihad Stadium in the FA Cup and it's a goal of, well, you would find it hard to think that there would be a goal of such quality that Rooney could do again, but you've just seen it. It was a truly wonderful header. Was so precise about Manchester United, the first time they've really been in an attacking area. Only had a bit of space on the and time on the ball, made the right decision to get it out to Valencia, and that's what Valencia gives Manchester United. He's a brilliant crosser of the ball, and Rooney isn't giving credit for his heading ability. He certainly is a good technical header of the ball. Absolutely no chance for Panty Limon making his FA Cup debut. And when you look at the fine margins of football, and there are plenty of them, underside of the bar and in, underside of the bar and out. Gone Manchester United's way. This boy now has shown a red card and it's going Manchester United's way even more. Company goes. They're down to 10 men within seconds of having gone a goal down. Chris Foy saying that uh, both feet were involved. And this is sensation upon sensation. Well, it was good play from Manchester United in the first place. They waited for the ball to be played into midfield, then they won it back, then they tried to counter attack. Pass was a little bit too long. And company goes in two footed. You have to see it again, but from the first viewing, I don't think he gets anything of the Match United player, but that, that doesn't seem to be the rule these days. He went in two footed, and you're always going to give the referee a chance of sending you off if you do that. Well, it's often said in uh, a derby game. There are no favourites, Manchester City were favourites, it's that scissors-type movement that officials do not like. Well, I'm not sure he does go it with his, his foot that challenges the ball, he actually gets it with the side of his foot. Ten years ago, that would not even be a foul, it would have been a brilliant tackle. And I still think it was a good tackle. The holders are in big trouble. They're losing at home where they haven't been beaten for well over a year. And now the man light and uh, Everett trying to pick the right pass here. And Jones uh, in the end looking to try and slide it on for Valencia. The right kind of contact. Out to centre back, Milner at right back. Means that Silva will come into a, a central area alongside Nazri. Two Manchester United players colliding with each other, and that's a little bit of luck for City. They haven't had much so far, and uh, it nearly produced an equaliser, but for a real reaching save by Lindegaard to keep out Aguero's shot. Well, Aguero scored against Liverpool with a, using his laces to get it underneath the Liverpool goalkeeper. That time he tried to bend it into the corner, and what a save from Lindegaard. It was poor defending from United to start with, two defenders colliding with each other. Deep corner from Johnson, Richards trying to power in. He's, uh, very, very good in the air, but Lindegaard, at the full extremity of his reach, Stop Manchester City getting an equaliser straight away. Jones and Smalling colliding with each other, then Ferdinand doesn't close the ball down. 
He was worried about the run at Silva, but a really good save with his left hand. Indigard. The time color, though, is red. Particularly in the nature of the card that was shown to Vincent Company, the most consistent of the Manchester City players. Since his 70th birthday, not much has gone right for Alec Ferguson. And now he's thinking, what are we going to do here? Maybe in regard to Phil Jones's injury, maybe in regard to how the team are now going to readjust. They won't want to be sitting back, Stuart, surely, when they've got an extra man. No, they won't. They want to control the game. They want to make Manchester City, Manchester City have to run around. It's all going their way at the moment. Brilliant header from Rooney. Company, I think, sends off wrongly. Again, the goal. And he gets a bit of time in the De Jong can't get there. Lescott comes out the danger area, but what a cross it was into the box. And Richards, the right back, can't quite get there. He's a good header of the ball, Richards. See him coming in at the last minute, can't get there. But that's an absolutely perfect header from Wayne Rooney. And he lets everyone watching around the world know that Manchester United are very much his club. It's been uh, the rumour mill again after disciplinary action against him for the after effects of a, a post-game night out that he wasn't able to train as Manchester uh, United was going to do the next day he wasn't alone in that for Johnny Evans who's uh, on the bench here and they could see in a few minutes Johnny Evans mm. if Jones goes off Evans will come into centre half Smalling would then go to right back Aaron Gibson was the other player involved and they were all uh, Omitted, although Evans actually was injured in the Blackburn game and wouldn't have played anyway. But that's all done and dusted. And, uh, life goes on at Manchester United. And what a win this would be, given all the circumstances in the lead up to it. But we're still a long way away from that being confirmed. Manchester City, even with 10 men, have got the individual capability to give their own cause, their own ability to retain the FA Cup some sort of chance. Jones limps back, but he's still limping. And Man City looks like De Jong's the holding midfield player, and in front of him it's going to be Nasri and Silva They're trying to get Kolarov high up the field on the left-hand side. A bit of attacking, a few attacking options down that left-hand side, and Aguero will be up front by himself. So that's how they've readjusted the side. Milner at right back. And for company, Stuart, incidentally, Unless there is an appeal, which I, I, I promise you they won't get away with because of the way the uh, officials uh, are now uh, taught and uh, told to referee and get the support from the administrators. But here's Adam Johnson. But with company having been sent off earlier this season against Wolves, that will be a four-game ban. And I guess will encompass both semi-finals of the uh, League Cup. As you said, he's been their most consistent player. He's the best defender in the Premier League at the moment. Vincent Company, one of the best defenders in Europe. I've seen him play for Belgium on a few occasions. Got, uh, Liverpool here, Wigan away in the Premier League. Tottenham at home, a massive Premier League match, and in the second leg at Anfield in the next four games for Manchester City. I suppose that could change if this finishes a draw and there's a replay in there. But uh, anyway, let's concentrate on uh, what Manchester City do. Without company here. Ponte Limon to Milner. Johnson. City throw. So he couldn't have done anything about the goal, could he? Ponte Limon. City had started with the confidence coursing through their veins of uh, Max Milner was very much involved and played really well in the 6-1 at Old Trafford. With a severely different set of circumstances now. And uh, the angle of challenges will be under scrutiny. The City fans bellowing for disciplinary action against Giggs, who went with one leg. 
but not from a great angle. So he doesn't get the ball. Good play from Aguero. He just stuck his leg across Giggs, so Giggs couldn't get a touch on it. Started the game well, Aguero. Only caught by Kolarov. What Manchester United need now is to be calm in this cauldron. It's an old uh, footballing cliche, and I'm sure with the very top officials, <laughs> Paul Scholes will be happy enough. I'm sure he'll feel that he's helping the cause, but not necessarily wanting to uh, get into the action straight away. It has been in midfield where they've been uh, short-handed and, in truth, short of quality. And Ryan Giggs reinventing himself in his late 30s as a central midfield player. Oh, much better off Ryan Giggs playing in that area when there's three in that central mm. midfield area, which, to a certain degree, they have got today with Rooney dropping that little bit deeper. And for the third FA Cup meeting in a row, a player has been sent off. Previous two occasions, Manchester United players in uh, the semi-final at Wembley at the Skulls, of course, in the previous meeting, February 2004, and it was Gary Neville and uh, Manchester United went on to win 4-2 at Old Trafford. Skulls scored in that game. Chris Foy. He's uh, seen that as a two-footer. I'm afraid I don't see it. Same way as Chris Foy, I see it along with Mancini. I think referees are too eager to send players off. I should like to call uh, Chris Foy, Prince Park Rangers Chelsea, which is the same day that Manchester City won 6 1 at Old Trafford, this second game. In the Premier League double header. Chris Foy sent off two Chelsea players, Asimbra and Drogba. Drogba was for a dangerous tackle. Interesting, there was only one player that ran towards Chris Foy to even complain about the tackle, and that was Wayne Rooney when it happened. Silva. Manchester the City with plenty forward here, including Kolarov, who had the shot that was blocked. Here's Milner. Now Johnson, Silva, Aguero, Milner, and was by Everett. Stop the cross coming into the Manchester United penalty area. Lescott, Richards. And a keep ball from the side with ten men. First quarter of the game. It's been uh, full of incident. This is a player that needs to do more in Man City colours, Samir Nasri. Hasn't really performed so far. It's an inspiration for Arsenal last season. by Manchester City this, Silva past Evra, and uh, it's a corner. Brilliant combination play from Man City, one and two touch passing, clever movement, Silva just takes it away, from Rooney goes past Evra, running in with the block eventually, they're getting themselves back in the game now. Adam Johnson's corner, I yeah, probably thought it was his, but... Work out that way. Collar off. Lead away by Rooney. Milner. Johnson who taken the corner. Nasri. Again, the man who breaks up the play. From Manchester United is Wayne Rooney. And he was dumped on his backside as he played the ball wide to uh, Nani. Chris Foy was very close. Rooney's not complaining. Manchester United still had the ball. Jones. Here's Valencia. 
Carrick with uh, more license to get forward now that Manchester United have the extra man. Jones with the cross, well defended by Lescott. And they, uh, as far as Valencia. They have to play this uh, shrewdly, Manchester City, if they're going to stand any chance of staying in the competition. And goes Aguero. And I guess you could say, if you're being cynical, Stuart shrewdly is to make the most of every bit of contact. And that's what they'll try and do. The crowd are bound for blood every time there's a challenge. It's a poor challenge from Jones. No intention to hurt Aguero. Not to play Aguero, just mistimed it. And here comes City again. Milner. Two rolls and down the right hand side. Nicely worked with Adam Johnson. But there's no uh, Edin Dzeko, who's the best header of the ball. Manchester United will remember that. He scored the Champions League goals against them for Wolfsburg, as well as the uh, two in the 6 1. And he struck a community shield goal. Nice David De Gea on his uh, United debut at Wembley in August. Manchester United will be pleased that they've got Barr and Niobe up against him. Brilliant in the air. They didn't cope with it at all well. On that occasion, there was Aguero and Silver in the box. Slightly different attributes that they've got. Oh, so. oh, who bullied, if that's the right word, in uh, Manchester United into submission on Wednesday night. On the ground formerly known as St James's. Well, look at Giggs. Well, I didn't want to hit it in the end, but Nanny will. Stopped by Milner. Johnson. That's risky from Ferdinand. And uh, Aguero got himself into an onside position. And he goes on and hits the side netting. But Rio Ferdinand looking round to blame. Uh, well, he's having a go at Jones. And I don't think Jones is right at the moment. Jones didn't recover to get into a good position, but it's Ferdinand's fault. And then Ferdinand doesn't come alive mm -hmm. until too late there. Smalling does well just to force Aguero away from goal. He's never going to score from that angle. But Ferdinand's not been having a good time of late. He's trying to blame Jones. And Jones isn't having any of it. Mm -hmm. Knock the ball away. Oh, words to that effect. Smalling. United haven't won the FA Cup since 2004. It's not so long in the history of many clubs, but in their history, it's a poor run. And players like Rio Ferdinand and Wayne Rooney do not have winners' medals. Like most of Mancini's men do. Those, of course, like Aguero, who only came in this season. It's his FA Cup debut today. He's nice to get his tactics right now, Mancini. I think they've recovered fairly well. He was getting Savic warmed up. He's decided to stick with Richards at centre half and Milner at right back. There's some plenty of energy down this right hand side. Milner and Johnson on this right hand side. Kolarov can be the almost wing back on that left hand side, making up two positions. But Jones doesn't look fit to me. After undoubtedly his worst game in the Manchester United shirt. At Newcastle, which ended with that uh, crazy own goal. And that's been the way it's been going for Manchester United. If they were to lose Jones relatively early in the match, and they are on a uh, very poor. And the players missing through injury. And, uh, notably, of course, Nemanja Vidic, captain, and uh, it's fair to say the strongest of their centre back options. Even Everest had to fill in in the middle of the defence during matches recently. Carrick's had a couple of games there too. I don't think we see Carrick play too many more games there after the Blackburn game. Uh, Yakubu knew too much for him. And if Manchester United, who, who like Manchester City, are in the Europa League now, having gone out of the Champions League for Manchester City, not so much of a disgrace, a tough group. Bayern Munich and Napoli, the two teams that went through for Manchester United, though, it was a, a real lapse in standards.
Biggs foul. Only once since Sir Alex Ferguson uh, took charge of uh, Manchester United. Have United gone out in the third round? And uh, we brought you that game a couple of seasons ago, uh, home to Leeds from two divisions lower as they were then. Here's Nani. Can give it to Evra, who is uh, yelling for the ball. A good cross now, and City could be in further trouble. They are. It's a wonderful finish from Danny Welbeck. A second spectacular goal. And a Manchester lad starts the celebrations again in the Manchester derby for those wearing red. Well, it's a brilliant finish in the end. Evra did well getting forward. The cutback was on. Man City defended it well to start with, or they got players back in there. But once again, no chance for the goalkeeper. And Welbeck, who has got qualities on the turn, right into the corner. Here is a good bit of play from Nani. Sets up Evra. Didn't get the clearance quite away, but he reacts first. Nasri wasn't quick enough to it. De Jong wasn't quick enough to it. Welbeck, good anticipation. And good technique, brilliant technique his body away from the ball, right into the corner. Well, with just a third of the 90 minutes gone, Alec Ferguson's team allegedly arriving here in some disarray, uh, well on the way to putting out the holders and rubbing Manchester City's noses in it. It's the start of payback for the 6-1. At Old Trafford in October. Two extraordinary goals, but really a key moment when we come to scrutinise it at the end of the game, unless there is an amazing turnaround, will be Chris Foy's decision to red card the City skipper company. Well, I was very critical of Foy's performance in that game that you were talking about, the QPR Chelsea game. In my view, the singer didn't even commit a foul against. Right, Phillips when they went through and he sent him off. And I'm not sure that Didier Drogba deserved more than a yellow card. And I would say, and only in my view, I don't agree with the rules, it wasn't even a foul by Vincent Company. That's my view. Valencia. And you won't find Manchester United easing off the pressure against the depleted City here. They will sense an opportunity to get more goals and win by a, a massive margin if they can. And it has been very much the way for Manchester City, who have so often been in Manchester United's shadow. And even when City last won the league back in 1968, Manchester United a few days later went and won the European Cup at Wembley. Although that did herald a spell where City were supreme. They went on to win the FA Cup in 69, winning a Cup Winners' Cup. They were a fantastic side in the late 60s, early 70s, under the combined management of Joe Mercer and Malcolm Allison. And, uh, in the 1970s, good. Manchester United were, of course, relegated. There's some good players in those days as well. There's a Colin Bell, magnificent midfield player. Some of it, Francis Lee here today and expecting the blue moon to be rising again. But the Red Devils have found the recipe. Two really terrific goals, it must be said. And the first one against 11 men it must also be emphasised. Agree with you totally, Stuart. Nigel de Jong, you'd think as a defensive minded player, would beat Danny Welbeck to that dropping ball. And then did he not get there? Welbeck put it in the corner. <laughs> and the other player, Nasri, been critical of this season for Man City. He was slow to react, the ball went up in the air. Welbeck was standing next to Nasri, got back there and got the goal. The same Danny Welbeck is going to get a yellow card here. Pushing for a place in England's squad for the European finals and uh, the European summer coming up in June and July. 
Well, from point of view, I hope it's July because you have to stay in the competition. So, uh, get into that uh, one of the stages and Wayne Rooney suspended from the first two England games, but now available for the third after a generous decision by the uh, appeals committee. But we're focusing on Welbeck as we should do here. Rooney's an ally for Manchester United. Wow. Yeah, it's a great finish. Nasri heads out, then stands still. De Jong doesn't go towards the ball, he goes to the side of the ball. And Welbeck's awareness and technical ability to swivel on that and hit it right into the corner was brilliant. He's taken over from Hernandez as the main striker now at Manchester United, I think, in that forward position. And what about Dimitar Berbatov? Not even in the uh, 18 here today. That sort of quality, isn't he? Berbatov is the technical player, the one that links up the play. Scores his fair amount of goals as well, but both Hernandez and Welbeck like to run in behind the opposition. Well, Berbatov, uh, there's a Balotelli is out with an ankle injury. And, uh, not impressed with what he's been seeing. And uh, all the good and the great are here today. David Beckham uh, looking for a new club. Well, the skulls can come back. What about Beckham? He's a booking for Nani. Manchester United just got to be careful here, not encouraging. Uh, I was going to say earlier, and I don't think I finished the sentence about an uh, old cliche that referees like to even it up. I, I, I don't think that's absolutely true with these top officials, but if, if, um, if you can see that we've got a referee here, if he feels that another red card should be shown, he's not going to be shy of showing it, should we say? Particularly as a Manchester United player, mm. and they do try and even it up. There's no question about human nature. Nani would give Manchester United even more breathing space, but the cross is too strong. I think that's the area they can cause problems, Manchester United. They keep getting it into wide areas. Valencia out on that right hand side, Nani on the left hand side. Both fullbacks want to get forward to make up the numbers in attacking areas for Man City, Milner and Kolarov. So it's a great opportunity for two excellent wide players to keep getting at the fullbacks and getting crosses in. Jiggs, who's got more time on the ball because of the uh, sending off. Jones moving more freely now. Rooney. Jiggs, Evra. Rooney. That's the sort of pass he probably wouldn't have played at 0 0 or at 1 0. Cheeky. Smalling, a happy return for him, he's not been at all well. There was a fear that he might have caught a glandular fever, a disease that he had as a child. The diagnosis is just tonsillitis, course of antibiotics, and he's back in a couple of weeks. The right time he will feel. Really, a bit of a hit and hope. And so much has gone Manchester United's way so far, why not? I actually think he's playing in his best position now as the attacking midfield player. I think that's where he's going to play for most of the rest of his career because he's a good pass for the ball. He can find space like he is now, pick out his passes. It's a poor kick by the goalkeeper. And there's a challenge. Penalty! And the chance for Manchester United to go 3-0 up. Or is it? It's... Uh... Welbeck concerned about. And it's a good pass into Welbeck. He takes his first touch, then just takes his second one away from Kolarov. Once Kolarov goes to ground, it's always going to be a problem for him here. It's a great touch from Welbeck. Richards was getting across. It's going to be Wayne Rooney. Oh, I don't know whether Welbeck thought for one moment he was going to get a second yellow card for trying to influence the referee, but here's Rooney. To make it a magnificent first half here for Manchester United, but Pantelim on safe, but Rooney can follow it up. That's the way it's going for United today. At the second attempt, his second goal. And it is City nil, United three. Well, you're quite right, it's going all Manchester United's way, not a great penalty, the right height for the goalkeeper. And he palms it back into the danger area. 
He just about keeps on his feet here, Wayne Rooney. Just starts to slip with a good header. Back across Pantillimot. It's all going match United's way. But Chris Boy was right to give the penalty on this occasion. He kept his composure here. Wayne Rooney didn't rush it. Just made sure he got over it. It got there in the end. There's going to be no, surely no, third defeat in a row for Manchester United, who rarely lose uh, two in succession, but have done going into this game at home to Blackburn and away to Newcastle in the Premier League. And we want however many six, I think, will be at the Manchester United's dream situation, and it could be four here. Richards, what Manchester United didn't do in the league game, Here's a nanny. The whistle has gone. Stuart, what, they got a goal to make it 3 1, didn't they? And then they went to try and get back into the game and were just picked off. Oh. That wasn't under orders from Alec Ferguson, and I think would have taken a 3 0 defeat or a 3 1 defeat. And Manchester City have got to bear that in mind here, otherwise, those uh, 6 1 celebrations could be uh, knocked to one side by an even bigger margin of defeat. Well, they certainly had the opportunity. Jones and Valencia breaking down that right-hand side. And I'm not sure Welbeck did enough for Valencia in the box there. Valencia was waiting and waiting. He was looking to find the right pass. Welbeck was almost hiding behind Richards. And Richards did well just to get the clearance in. But it's dangerous times now for Man City. Not in terms of the game, but how many did they lose by it? Giggs reversing it cleverly for Welbeck. Coming on to this. Well back. Rooney. This is he had enough numbers back. They're defending uh, with any great uh, optimism and they lose possession again. They've won all their Premier League games this season. Rooney on a hat trick. So that's where he's clever. He was looking for a pass, looking for a pass. There wasn't one on. So trying to get the shot in. He hasn't gone his way, has it? Goalkeeper. Tillymore. No chance with the first two goals. And he makes a decent save from the penalty. Mm. Wayne Rooney to head it back past him. Andre Kanchelskis. Uh, it was a 5 0 win at Old Trafford in the early years of the Premier League. Got a hat trick in a Manchester derby. And he went on to represent Manchester City as well. And of course, the headlines in the papers today about a 60 million move for Manchester City to sign Wayne Rooney from Alec Ferguson. I think not. Not much to kiss the badge, I don't think that's. Uh... He's going to endear himself to, to the City fans. I think like Tevez kissed the badge a few times as well, didn't he? They've all kissed the badge once or twice. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever do that? I remember doing it once. When I went back to West Ham and I was playing for Coventry. And I got a 1 0 victory. That's something I was proud of. Two minutes to go to half time. Well, you could have imagined all sorts of scenarios for this game because of the potential in both teams, but I'd be very surprised if anybody came up with something like this. And now Aguero, having started the game so well, he's an isolated figure up front, but there's the key figure in the game. He's made a big, big decision, I think a mistake. Aguero, but, uh, comprehensively outnumbered. Nani. Carrick. Certainly Carrick can be the player that can dictate the play. The quarterback. There's going to be no pressure on he can find the right pass. Away by Richards. Interesting to see how Roberto Mancini sends out his team for the second half. And they'll just uh, accept the defeat. This sort of scoreline and 
We find the risk of uh, extra pummeling. The Manchester United fans around the world be pinching themselves at this. It's also a warning for Man City. I remember Arsenal being top of the table, coming to Manchester United and losing 4-0. And then that gave Manchester United the confidence to play on from there, and Arsenal lost their confidence. But it happened to Man City. Carrick. Here's Valencia. Giggs looking for Rooney. And Muscat just looking for some distance into the clearance. Smalling's header. And then Silver's touch. Not quite up to the mark then. So we're into the two added minutes. Half. Uh, which both, uh, literally and colloquially Manchester City have seen red. Certainly angry with uh, Chris Boyd's brandishing of the red card. Oh, a touch away from going 4 0 down. Well, he does get a touch on this, I think, well back. A very slight one, but this is brilliant play. First of all, Rooney again switches the play out to Valencia. Valencia just buys himself enough space to get his cross in. What an opportunity. And Tinamon doesn't dive out for it. Two centre-halves are on the six-yard box, and that's a golden opportunity. Doesn't take it this time, Welbeck. But Rooney, Valencia, Welbeck, that combination is really causing Man City problems. Colour up. Silva. Carrick knew uh, what he was doing with half time approaching. He's not getting past me if the ball's past me. That's United now, even Wilbeck's just getting behind the ball. Rooney's doing a good job just trying to shield the ball into Adam Johnson there. Just slowing down Manchester City's movement. Silva. Of course, it was uh, Manchester United had Johnny Evans sent off in the 6 1. Manchester City already started to get a grip on the game, and we should say here that Manchester United had scored through Wayne Rooney's header in the 10th minute before Roberto Mancini's side went down to 10 men when his skipper company was sent off, after which. Welbeck scored a spectacular second and then was brought down for a penalty which led to another Rooney header. Not quite according to the textbook, but he followed up after Pantelimon had saved his initial spot kick. At half-time at the Hetihad Stadium, it is Manchester City nil, Manchester United three. Welcome back to the Etihad Stadium, pretty subdued Etihad Stadium, and it's not the rain I'm talking about, it's the scoreline and a couple of changes, Stuart Robson, that reflect, I think, uh, Roberto Mancini's prospects for the second half, a couple of defensive players coming on. Yeah, Zavaleta and Savic both coming on for Silva and Johnson. Certainly going to be more defensive now, they're going to try and, not say hang on to a 3-0 defeat, but they're going to try and make sure that it's damage limitation. As the teams came out of the tunnel, one or two of the City players were still having a chip at Chris Foy. But uh, the decision has been made. Manchester United have the extra man. Two of their three goals have come since the sending off of company. One of those two from a correctly awarded penalty by the official who gets the second half underway. Well, it looks as they're going to play with the back three. Manchester City, Savage as the left-sided centre-back, Lescott as the middle one, Richard as the right-sided one, and Kolarov and Zabaleta will be the wing-backs, with Milner and De Jong in central midfield, and Nasri supporting Aguero, that's the 
tactics, the formation that Man City are going to use in the second half. Manchester United won't deeply mind whether they increase the scoreline or not, but it is their very DNA, really, to push on when they do get possession, so I don't think the game will be played in the, the respective halves of the two teams. I imagine that Mancini's done what he's talking at half-time, but still just adjusting one or two things. Start of the second half. There you see Nasri almost playing as a striker alongside Aguero. It's not quite as defensive as we, as we first thought. Carrick. But of course, if Manchester United's wide players get really good width, it could take Zabaleta back there, it could take Kolarov back into a defensive position, so it ends up being a back five. Mancini much margin should Manchester City pick up an injury or two in the second half. Yeah, he's already gone down. Yeah, he made those two changes. Here's Richards. To make light of the uh, lack of numbers. And Winfrey has blown. Oh, has been. Uh, Vigilant, shall we say, when Manchester United have been making their challenges. And grabbing by Everett in the end, having been grabbed by Richards first. That's what Everett was doing. It wasn't the right way to do it, by grabbing hold of the referee's shirt. And saying, That's what Richards was doing to me. But it will give Collar up an opportunity. Nasri, I don't think, will hit it from this sort of distance. It's going to be Collar off. Of course, tested this for half for Lindegaard. off and it's a brilliant free kick and Manchester City with 10 men to score the first goal of the second half so Evra's protestations were perhaps justified as if he felt what was coming from the opposing left back well it was a great free kick gets it over the top of the wall it looks as though Lindegaard was slow to react to it and it's right in the corner it's hit with a bit of pace a bit unfair on the goalkeeper, always going away from him. A really good free kick. Welbeck on the end of the wall decides not to jump. Oh, Man City, can you stage a fight back here. Well, let me remind you all again that 3 1 down at home was the danger score for Manchester United in October in the Premier League at Old Trafford. It encouraged them to chase the game, and City picked them off. to be a renewed optimism here and uh, it's got to be done with a certain amount of consideration but it's only given a bit of life to a second half which might have been seen to be a formality and it certainly keeps them and City faithful on the edge of their seats a bit more noise than they were at the start of the half third goal of the season and, uh, one of them was a very similar free kick here in the Champions League an equaliser against Napoli Evra Rooney uh, he's a seven hat-tricks to his name all of them in his time with Manchester United two of them uh, back to back earlier this season Pushed him to the ground. Giggs, Rooney. And back ahead of him. Valencia to his right. To his right, Jones. Carrick. Giggs. Now Valencia. 
James going on the overlap. Still there if Valencia wants to use him, as he seems reluctant to do. Carrick. Now Jones involved. On to Valencia. Better angle for the cross. And the header from Nani. He's never going to trouble the goalkeeper. A good patient build up. Skull's getting warmed up now. Well, he is an ideal player in these circumstances. His lack of match action won't be so vulnerable when they've got an extra man. You're absolutely right. But the one thing that I would be worried about if I was Sir Alex Ferguson is you don't want to even up the numbers. And there's one thing that Paul <laughs> Skulls can't do is tackle. Yeah, and he never learnt his lesson. Yeah. Many, many games. Long ago that he was sent off in the FA Cup against Manchester City. Here's Jones finding a gap and powering his way into it. And De Jong did well in the end to get back and get the tackle in. He's going to be outpaced here. It's a really good blocking. It's Jones at his best. Short corner taken by Ryan Giggs. Valencia. He'll pick a pass. Rooney, looking for the bottom corner. And that's exactly what Valencia does. He bides his time, he's patient on this occasion. He can't see the cross, so he cuts it back to Rooney. With his left foot, strikes it well. It goes between the legs of Savic, just bending wide. First third round tie that Sir Alec Ferguson was involved in with Manchester United was at Manchester Derby in 1987. United won 1-0 at Old Trafford. And after the second half leading 3-0 here. Uh, Collar off. He struck a cracking free kick. City struggling to get back on the ball since then. Pass wide, Rooney, flipping it into the middle, wide by Savage, Giggs. Play at one side and go round the other these days. But, uh, I think he was passing it for Rooney, he'll just try to get back on side. And that's got, and making it awkward for him. Well, it would be interesting to see what would happen if Manchester City were able to get the next goal. Certainly reignite the cup tie as a true contest. Moment, Manchester United still holding the whip hand, despite the lead being cut to two. I certainly thought about it at half time in terms of the tactics. Not sure he went as defensive as we thought he would do. When you looked at the players, you thought that was a that was his intent, but by bringing those players on and making it a back three, he's allowed them to get two up front, Nazri and Aguero. But rather than doing it with the personnel that he had on the pitch, he has made sure that when they need to defend, which they will do a lot, Zabaleta, Savic, shouldn't yeah. be found wanting in that respect. Certainly Zabaleta. A really good player, I think. I think he looks a bit inside more regularly. Here comes Jones again. Little freedom to attack. A lovely ball slid down the side of Manchester City. To Welbeck, Valencia stayed on his feet. And for Jones to try and place it. Nasri and Aguero working well together as uh, Manchester City tried to counter attack. And uh, it's the risk of pushing too many men on, and they're not short of numbers here at the moment. And as you can see, as they deal with the four up for Manchester United with a fair amount of comfort. Nazri. Helped out by Kolarov, who in turn by Savage. International from uh, Montenegro. Zabaleta. Mm -hmm. 
get forward and make an extra man. Nasri does have a key role. So I think everyone up here in Manchester supporting City would agree with what you said in the first half, that there's more to come from Nasri. So kind of the adjustment from the Arsenal way where he was maybe a more significant player. He's just one of a uh, what a glitterati, really. And his best ability is when he was running with the ball in those sort of areas, dribbling past people, running at pace, changing direction. He hasn't really done that at City. His passing in the first half is fairly accurate, but it didn't influence the game, he didn't affect the game. He got a, a big game against uh, Manchester United on his CV when he scored two and a two one win for Arsenal at the Emirates a few years back. Nani. Well back. Phil Jones has joined in, in the middle as well. And there's uh, Nasri caught. And uh, Carrick. I might remember a tackle just before half time that we spotted up for you. And he's got away with this one as well, I think. Just nick the ball away from Carrick there, Nasri. They can't keep coming too deep, otherwise Aguero will be isolated. That's not the tactics I think that were intended by Mancini. And, well, what a headline this is. All the farewells have been made, the uh, obituaries to his career have been written. Glowing ones. United to the core, and when the uh, call has come, and I'm sure it was the call rather than him knocking on the manager's door saying, I'm ready. The comeback for Paul Scholes. Interesting to see who it's for, what position he's actually going to play. He's going to play in the holding midfield role. He's going to play further forward. Task, I'm sure, is to make sure that Manchester City retain possession. So uh, adept at that, and I'm sure that's the sort of skill when you're in these circumstances. I don't mean playing a local derby in front of 40,000 hostile fans, but uh, when you're 3 1 up and your team's got an extra man, I don't think scores could be uh, doing this sort of job in five years' time, let alone in five seconds, five minutes' time. Particularly if Manchester United wide players with real wit when he gets on the board, he hits those big diagonal passes. And one of the wide players is coming off, we're hearing, in Nani. Giggs stays on. It'll be interesting to see them get back on the same wavelength again. Giggs and Scholes having played hundreds of matches together for Manchester United. Rooney. Always veering wide. So here it is. 2012 has produced a major story for Manchester United. It seems in winning this uh, local derby third round FA Cup, but doing so with Paul's goals back on the pitch. He picked out his favourite goal of his entire career and he scored some wonderful ones. A winning header here a couple of years ago, virtually the last touch of the game because of the significance of it. And the headers have gone in already, two of them from Rooney. Different number. Same player. <laughs> A penny for your thoughts, Mr Beckham. One of the greatest talents recent years in English football, Paul Scholes, brilliant pass for the ball, great shooter, not the best tackler. Roy Keane, he come back? <laughs> and Ryan Giggs just keeps rolling along. Well, Ryan Giggs has gone out to a left-sided position, exactly where Nani was playing, and Paul Scholes has gone in alongside Carrick, and Rooney just in front of them. Letter doesn't get there. This ball to him. I mentioned Scholes being a risk coming back. I guess Roy Keane might be one as well. <laughs> In terms of avoiding the cards, because the 
Champions League final 1999. And both were suspended. And he's just going to sit there. Don't want to make too many runs forward, Scholes, but he'll just try and keep the ball moving. Yeah. Right to Rooney and Carrick into the game. Well, <laughs> that was for the first missed time tackle. He managed to check. Aguero. And, uh, good recovery. Right over a foul by Aguero. Free kick to Manchester United. I think Aguero missed an opportunity here. Managed to get his shot away early for to play in. McCauley wanted to go himself. Good defending on this occasion by Abra. Just gets his body in the way. Kick at it. Well, there's half an hour to go. If this backfires on Sir Alex Ferguson. Having lost the last two games, even the 25 years, and certainly the last 15 years of which has probably been designated the, the best manager of all time. But, uh, it would be a risk to that reputation. There's no sign of that happening as yet. Here's Valencia. Carrick. Scholes. I thought I'd be saying that name again. Here is uh, Valencia inside the penalty area. United are asking the question. Chris Foy says no this time. Well, Valencia's got the beat in the collar of every time. Goes at the inside and then goes down the outside. And it's a, it's a foul, whether it's in the box or not. Can't quite see. Probably just outside the box, but certainly a foul from Kolarov. Valencia's beaten him time and time again. He can't believe it. Quite evening it up, but he just didn't want to give it, did he? You, you did mention the human factor earlier, and it's very hard. Sent off the City player, he's given the United an absolute certain penalty. And if it was in the area, he's just turned down an absolute certain penalty claim for them. Now, Carrick can get within range, goes for the pass. It always amazes me why players don't shoot this ball in these conditions. Really set up for the shot. Oh, Welbeck made a run, but there's no space really to hit Welbeck in behind on that occasion. As you said, on this pitch as well, which is very fast and slick with the rain that we've had on it. There's a mistake between the Smalling and Jones. Aguero. And it's over hit for Zavala. There's a chance. You can see Manchester City, when they do believe there's a moment to get forward, they will gamble. The right pass from Aguero, good vision from him. He has sliced the ball as Zabaleta was making the break from his right wing back position. That's uh, under hit by Scholes. Oh, and there's a chance here, it's going to be 3 2, it is! It's Aguero who followed up his own shot. And Manchester City are back in business, and it was Paul Scholes who gave the ball away. Well, it was a simple throw-in into Skulls. He under-hit it. Milner does really well to pinch the ball away from them. And Chini wants his players just to calm down, but here Paul Skulls goes to the ball, under-hits it. Milner does well. And look at the movement from Aguero. Doesn't get too tight to Smalling. And then he realises it's a mistake from Lindegar. There's no question about that. He should be holding on to that. He went past the ball and he reacted quickly to Aguero. And we've got a real game on our hands now. Manchester City 2, Manchester United 3. Inside 20 minutes of the second half. First Kolarov's free kick. And then Aguero following up on his own shot. And Manchester United seem comfortable with the throw-in on the far side. And the 37-year-old comeback non-kid needs to uh, take the blame and now clear his head and get on with trying to get Manchester United towards a, a goal and restoring a, a bit of comfort to proceedings here. And with Valencia and with Jones, they might just do it in this attack with good handling by Pantelimon, particularly compared to what's just happened at the other end. Yeah, it was a good opportunity, well worked by Manchester United to get Jones in. It wasn't a great cross. 
Trying to hit an area. Oh, some nervous Manchester United fans. But Giggs. And Rooney Scholes makes a forward run. Valencia. Would you believe it? I think it's time to say that this is the FA Cup. The world's greatest club knockout competition. The oldest for sure and still retaining its vitality. Don't you have to say, and anything can happen? I think so. The magic thereof. And it's not very magical for Manchester United at the moment. It shouldn't have come down to the realms of the, uh, the ethos of the way matches are played in this competition. It was a straightforward task, really, to defend the 3-0 lead against a team with 10 men in the second half. I think we've got to give Mancini a bit of credit as well for his half-time tactical change. Yes, he put on Z Zabaleta on the right-hand side as a wing-back. Yes, he brought Savage on, but what it's enabled them to do is to play with two up front, Nasri and Aguero. And the wing-backs have tried to attack when they can. I don't think Match United have coped with it particularly well. I thought their wide players would go even wider to cause Kolarov and Zabaleta to go back. But they've actually tucked them in at times. Like this, as was pointed out plentifully in the build-up to this game, this is not a Manchester United of past generations. And there's a good interception by well back there. It's a side that's been struggling, a side that shipped six goals in its previous two games and two more here against the team with ten men. If Man City can get a couple of set plays, you'd still fancy Richards coming up. You'd still fancy Lescott in the box to cause one or two problems. Savage maybe even. Yeah, he's good in the air. He's going for that. That's the City up for the fight. Welcome back, Paul Scholes, to... Top-flight football, took an absolute whack from Micah Richards here. It's a foul, really, because Skull was headed the ball oh, and Richards no. didn't. Well, not the wind out of his sails a little bit, but he's got up and got on with it. Well, he's dished it out over his career, but he's taken the fair bit as well. And uh, he has been, as you said, might be one of the great players of his generation. Biting in on Carrick. Here is goals. Giggs. Evra. Rooney in the middle. Well back, Rooney. Oh, and Lescott. <laughs> he perhaps doesn't move his feet as quickly as some of the defenders. Did well to reposition and get in the way. Scores again. The other thing I think Man City have done quite well. Both times they've scored it on Manchini's just got them to calm down. So still got plenty of time. Don't go racing around like you were talking about. Manchester United chasing the game at 3 1 and then losing it 6. Man City haven't done that. They're still playing a counter attacking game. Smalling. Rooney has scored a wonderful header and a follow up penalty. On the side of Welbeck's uh, volleyed finish. But Manchester United losing the ball and uh, losing the position that they had at half time. Giggs. Reflection, one or two little things breaking City's way, which certainly didn't happen in the first half. And of course, the penalty incident. Uh, everyone from uh, Sir Alex Ferguson downwards in Manchester City. And as here, we're sure that another penalty should have been awarded their way. Jones. Scholes. And you're not watching a rerun of a pass game. This is live, and Paul Scholes is playing. Jones, Valencia was so influential in the building up that 3-0 lead in the first half. Scholes again. Evra, 
Dangerous times these for Manchester City, you feel. Exactly. He wanted a foul, a certain corner, that's a goal kick. And he wanted the ball played to him a little bit quicker. A bit more pace in it. A go at Everett. And gives him a little nod. Yeah, you're right. A bit different to Ferdinand and Jones in the first half. And here's the pass, just under hit. Zabaleta gets out there. I think it comes off. Good standing foot to start with, that's why he played it off the field. And he's becoming a bit of a grey beard, but he's still there. Approaching 900 games for Manchester United. It's not a bad record, is it? <laughs> it's just teasing one on. The willing uh, running of Welbeck. Supporting again, it breaks here for Valencia. Has to maybe go around the outside of Kolarov, who's had uh, trouble containing him. Up in support, crossed by Jones. And uh, helped out of harm's way by Richards, a big backheader. And that's what he does so well when balls are played into the box. Sometimes he lacks awareness, lacking concentration, but when balls are played, he's really determined. Everett, Valencia, Jones wants it. And it scores. Going to make up for the error at the other end. Well, that's what he does so often, hits the target. Valencia once again, just setting him up. Strikes it really well. A bit of swerve on it. Last. And we talked about Carrick not wanting to shoot from that sort of position. And, uh, there's much more threat from that poor Skulls drive than there was from Carrick's attempt to craft a pass to a teammate. And what Anderson and Park feel about the situation at the moment. So he's been brought on before those two. Especially if they see David Beckham coming down with pen in hand from the stand. Don't get too excited, that was just a, a, an attempt at humour on my part. <laughs> I don't think many stranger things than that have happened. It's pretty strange seeing goals again, given Manchester United resources. Alec Ferguson saying he wasn't going to sign anyone in the transfer window, and he has signed someone. Scholes registered in time to play today. Rooney. Scholes. Far side for handball against Everton, not given. Scores available again. But, uh, see, I have to turn, and it was a good job that Lindegaard was on the move. It's not a great kick, he's going to try and get back Milner. And City complaining that Milner was fouled, but Chris Foy didn't think so. Well, they've got to keep their concentration. Sure why they want to go all the way back to the goalkeeper there. Slightly under hit. In the garden did well to come out. It wasn't a great clearance for him. At least he was alert and alive. So Nero yeah. chasing it down. That's offside. It's a wet pitch, but not yet a totally sudden one. Well, you mentioned Anderson, here he is. Not long back from a couple of months out through injury. And Danny Welbeck doesn't want to go. Left an imprint with this goal, Manchester United second, and uh, being brought down shortly afterwards for the penalty. Which Rooney, at the second attempt, made it 3 0. And I thought he played well, Danny Welbeck, but he does give Manchester United his that threat in behind, plenty of pace. Great goal from them as well. Probably means that Rooney will play as the out and out centre forward. Anderson dropping into a midfield area. There's been a lot mentioned, uh, Stuart, about the aftermath of this match, how psychologically it will affect either team going into the uh, second half, or just the start of the second half of the Premier League season, with them uh, going for the title. And if Manchester United were to win, you could say yes, psychological boost, but the fact is that uh, 10, against 10, uh, 10 against 11 City have at least held their own,
and uh, they would get a lot of plaudits even if it finishes this way and the holders go out. Manchester United had the chance to really rub salt into the wound, didn't they? And get a high score. They really put Man City under a bit of pressure. They still could do, of course, if, uh, if they pick them off on the break, but if they're well back off, that's going to be not so easy to do. They're very, uh, very full of midfield players now. Not sure what sort of shape that Manchester United are playing. Looks like he's gone out to the left hand side again. He started off for a while there in the middle. See Anderson Carrick and the skulls midfield three. And Valencia out on the right. So we'll get plenty of ball in this area. And the Manchester City have to accept that. They've just got to try and find some way when they do get possession. Field in numbers, as you say, maybe working a throw in position up the field. And obviously, a free kick in a corner would be even better. Well, I think you're quite right. What they want to do is when they do counter attack, win a free kick so they can get players mm -hmm. up the field and start to play from there. When it's 3 1 or 3 0, it doesn't really mean much to you, but when it's 3 2, the opportunity, mm -hmm. a real problem for Manchester United. Bottom line about cup ties is uh, winning them. And the performances really not, uh, assessed as much as in uh, league games when, when you lose. If it's, it would be a heroic defeat for Manchester City, the holders would still be out. Griggs has had so many cup runs with Manchester United. Scores likewise. Held in the final in uh, 1999, the final for which he wasn't suspended. Jones. Skulls. Now Manchester City have to switch on and try and win it back. Skulls again. And again. Jones. Let's get in the way. Second ball. They get the throw, Manchester City. Not blessed with a lot of physically powerful players. Lescott, I suppose, De Jong, Richards. But, uh, they've relied a lot on skill and ability to pass the ball around the opposition to get to the top of the Premier League. And the likes of uh, Balotelli and Dzeko, who must be only used both out of contention today through injury. And there's a physical presence there that Manchester City haven't got today. Yaya Toure, the most physical of all, not available until now. He's uh, can't forget that town of the African Cup of Nations. Oh, I still think they're the best team on in the Barclays Premier League because they combine their attack in play, they can attack in many ways, good passing, they are running with the ball, physical strength as well with the likes of Naya Toure, but they also defend with great determination and passion and organisation. Sabaleta, spotted by Ferdinand. Goals to Carrick, helping Manchester United again by the short pass route. The passing statistics will be strong, and my word, talking about comebacks, Owen Hargreaves, who has been at Manchester City this season, has made three previous appearances, having left Manchester United, being released by Manchester United because of his injury problems. I don't think he's going to be shaking hands with the... Manchester United physio and uh, medical team before he goes oh, nice, on. Uh, he's quite close in this uh, criticism, hasn't he? Poor pass from Ferdinand again. Not sure what he was looking for there. Yeah. Manchester City have to keep believing that there is a miraculous finish to this third round FA Cup tie, which has brought us such drama. Not to. Uh, Teams going head to head at each other, which is perhaps what we expected. The uh, early exit of company changed those dynamics. The fortitude, first of all, the skill. We shouldn't underestimate how well Manchester United played when things were going their way in the first half to take advantage of those uh, situations. 
to go in with a 3-0 lead at the break. It's been a really proud response from Mancini's men. Amazingly, with 10 minutes to go, they're still very much in this match. And the fourth Manchester United goal would finish that off. Scholes. What Man City had to do exactly what Richards were doing. Put it, defenders under a bit of pressure. Now they've given the ball away, Manchester United. Teams nipping in. He's taken his uh, tally 17 goals this season for Manchester City. What a buyer he's been. And it's Nasri off Owen Hargreaves. Four years a Manchester United player. Only really one proper season for them. In which he helped them win the Champions League. And he did score on his Manchester City debut in the Carling Cup against Birmingham City. Milner. It's beautifully done. Kolarov, can they? Keep asking for a handball here, but uh, Jones pats where he believed the ball struck. The pressure on the referee. They went to sleep, Manchester United. Good little back heel there from Milner, getting Kolarov in. Valencia doesn't really work hard enough. It's actually Anderson who was getting back in there. And it came off Jones's foot onto an outstretched arm. We've seen them given. It would have been very unlucky for Jones if it was given. Now there's a chance for Man City. Taken by Milner. Not deep enough, headed out by Rooney, who's magnificent goal scoring header. Got the drama underway here. Oh, that was disappointing corner, wasn't it, from Milner? He's got to get the ball in the danger area. Got to put Manchester United under a bit of pressure but to allow it to go to that near post and Rooney to head clear. The real waste. Brian Kidd, of course, uh, a distinguished playing career with Manchester City, but mostly known for his time as a Manchester United uh, player and, of course, as a long time assistant to Alec Ferguson. Very much in the opposing camp to Alec Ferguson today. Hargreaves. And we do believe, Stuart, sometimes that these stories in this competition are written in the stars. And uh, there's a free kick here. And Valencia gives away on Kolarov and a chance to get the ball in the box, maybe even from this deep area. Kolarov uh, contents himself with switching the play and he does it spectacularly well. For Zabaleta. So they've got too many players behind the ball, though, so they do look to play that forward pass. There's no one in the box, that's why they've gone back again. That's a frustrating the Man City fans. Yeah, you've come to the stage of the game now where you've got to take the risk of losing 4-2 to try and make it 3-3. Milner. Ferdinand. Uh, oh, and the free kick's gone United's way. And Ferdinand uh, fretful again. He didn't get helped out. He's having to go at Everett because Everett got out of position. Ferdinand had to defend the space out in the left back area. I'm not sure what the foul's been given for. No. That's not given by the assistant. Stephen Child. The only thing that Milner did was have the ball between his legs and be on the ground, mm. which is usually a drop ball, I thought. Guard hasn't done his balls uh, particularly well. A great uh, save in the first half, but definitely culpable on the second Manchester City goal. <laughs> Chris Foy takes some guidance from his assistant here as the ball was in the air. Guerrero's OK, I don't think. He's trying to play it a little bit here. Right. Just puts his arm across him. Then has a little more than that. But certainly not enough to be having too much of a problem. Lescott, Richards. 
And here comes uh, Lindegaard. And it's just hoisted away from the goalkeeper who wasn't happy. Lescott jumping with him. And uh, Savic trying to put it goalwards. Rooney has to defend. And his pass is picked off. City will still plenty of players forward. They're still in with a shout here. Incredibly so. And when Richards got the bicycle kick, it nearly falls for Lescott. And Manchester United, still 11 against 10, are hanging on. Well, Rooney headed it back towards the goalkeeper, but Lescott was coming round the back here. No chance of Richards getting any sort of connection no, no, with that. That could have been penalised for dangerous play if that uh, led to a goal, but it didn't. Oh, does Rooney intend to head it back to Lindegaard there, or was that just coming off his head? He was trying to control it for himself to clear. Oh, his headers have done the job one way or another today. Or oh, nearly done the job. Time is on Manchester United's side. Player uh, down. And it's Savic who... Uh, Oh, they're going to have to play with nine men here. That might just kill it all off, because he cannot go back on. Unless they stop the bleeding uh, straight away, or... If there's any sign of blood, of course, the shirt will have to be changed. I understand the medical staff working frantically here. And that's well, how it happened. There was the clash of heads, it was when in the guard knocked it out. It was brave from Everett. Ray from Savage, desperate to get onto the ball. So, the climb gets even steeper for Manchester City. And, uh, United really had the opportunity to play keep ball at the moment. And uh, Scholes, the master at that. Chelsea played really well against QPR with nine men a few weeks ago. They were chasing the game. Come roaring back. And it's one of the half-time substitutes. Help Manchester City turn this around. At least in terms of the margin of defeat. Evra. Two minutes plus added time to go. A mega Manchester derby. In the context of the third round of the FA Cup. Anderson. And City have now got to try and squeeze the ball, win it back. Pulloff does well, gets time to Valencia on that occasion. Off, nice touch by Carrick. Jones. Rooney. Scholes. Carrick. Now Jones. Yeah. Need a chance to keep the ball. I couldn't quite do it for a longer period. I'll wait to see what the fourth official is going to hold up. In terms of added minutes, we're hearing that it might be three. I've seen that last free kick and the ball into the box that Man City played. They've somehow got to win a free kick in the Manchester United's half. It's the only way back for them at the moment, you think. I'd be pleased with the first half performance. I'm not sure it'd be quite so pleased with the way Man City have got back into the game. Well, I think from a neutral perspective, there have been uh, two winners on the pitch, really. Still, I mean, Manchester United look as though they're going to get the prize in the fourth round and they uh, like the bragging rights. But uh, the way Manchester City and Mancini, as you mentioned, his uh, tactical change at half-time has given this second half a sense of competition has been a truly excellent effort. And the way they've done it with patience as well, they haven't gone flying around trying to win the ball back too early, knowing that they might be picked off. Been very intelligent with their comeback, Man City. All credit to Mancini, his technical staff. And the players, of course. Really. Well, 
Valencia. Never been a, a drawn FA Cup tie between these two clubs. Valencia. And somehow, City have got to push those tired legs into some challenges. And if they do leave a gap at the back, to encourage Manchester City, maybe to Manchester United rather play a more difficult pass and risk giving the ball away. At the moment, the passes are too easy. And eventually, a City foot gets in. And Aguero looking for a way out. Zabaleta. Richards up front. Bought by Ferdinand. Here's your free kick. Here's the free kick. Richards playing as a centre forward, does well. He's got a bit of pace. Zabaleta plays the right ball to him. Rio yeah, Ferdinand gets the yellow card. It's not good defending from him at all. I don't think he's had a great game, Rio Ferdinand. It's off the pace. Michael Richards just nicks it past him. Ferdinand comes across. Will it be Kolarov again? Slightly wider angle. Now, what Man City players have to do is get on the knockdown and the rebound just in case Lindegaard drops it. What a moment we've got in this FA Cup third round tie. Prayers from those in blue. Could it be written in the stars that Manchester City are to come back here? Collar off. Oh, and it's knocked out by Lindegaard, and it didn't go the blue way. And the man in green's very fortunate. That was the knockdown I was talking about. And Man City did have players there, but it actually went past the players. Manchester United had a bit of luck there, and the goalkeeper. And they pile again. Savic, Zabaleta. City want a corner, and they've got it. Well, I think it's the wrong decision. Chris Foy's given a corner here. Here's the last chance. Up comes the six foot eight Costel Pantilimo. He still won't be able to head it though. Oh, oh. perhaps he will. Well, he's got to get back now, otherwise, uh, Manchester United will get out, but they don't need to. That is the final whistle. Rooney's two first half goals. A magnificent header and a follow-up, another header from a saved penalty. With Welbeck also scoring in spectacular fashion. It was all Manchester United, really, helped by Mancini having his captain sent off at 1-0. They played for almost the entire match with 10. But Manchester City came out in the second half with a difficult scenario, but a different tactical plan. Collar off with a wonderful free kick. And then a mistake yet again by a Manchester United goalkeeper, Lindegaard, allowing Aguero to score. And Paul Scholes, given his comeback today by the Manchester United management,